Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. NASA has been pushing the limits of human exploration for decades. The space marvel had taken giant leaps after experiencing epic failures, and now they have done what was seemingly impossible. They have created an engine that can explore the far reaches of the universe and travels at speeds faster than light. Well, in today's video, we are going to reveal the engine that not only challenges the laws of physics, but smashes through them with the force of a rocket launch. So, sit tight and prepare for a journey into the unknown, because we're about to explore the mind-blowing technology that could change the way we travel through space forever. NASA's ongoing efforts to explore the vastness of space are truly impressive. They're constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible in the realm of space travel. One of the most significant challenges in sending humans into space is the sheer vastness of it all. To put it in perspective, scientists use the concept of light years to describe these incredible distances. A light year represents the distance that light can travel in a year, which is approximately 6 trillion miles or 10 trillion kilometers. For instance, light from the moon takes just one second to reach our eyes, so the moon is one light second away. The sun is eight light minutes away because it takes eight minutes for sunlight to reach us. Even the closest star system, Alpha Centauri, is a staggering 4.3 light years away. Objects beyond our solar system can be billions of light years distant. When astronomers observe these far off objects, they are essentially peering back in time. Now we've all dreamed of traveling at the speed of light, making interstellar journeys incredibly quick. However, achieving such speeds requires an enormous amount of kinetic energy. Traditional rockets, like those used by Elon Musk's SpaceX, have to carry a massive amount of fuel and payload to move forward. Enter innovations like the M-Drive, a device that uses microwaves to create thrust without traditional fuel. But there's a catch. While it shows promise, the M-Drive's explanations for its thrust challenge the conservation of momentum and produce minimal thrust making it unsuitable for time travel or hoverboards. On a more hopeful note, there's the concept of the warp drive. Dr. Eric Lentz and others are working to make it a reality. If successful, this warp drive could revolutionize our understanding of space travel, potentially allowing us to break free from the limitations imposed by the laws of physics. In 1994, a Mexican mathematician named Miguel Alcubierre ignited discussions about warp drives not with the goal of building a spaceship, but as a theoretical exploration rooted in Einstein's theory of relativity. Einstein's theory revolutionized our understanding of space and time by showing that they can warp and bend due to energy and matter. Alcubierre's brilliance lay in taking these theoretical ideas to the extreme. He wondered if it was possible to manipulate space-time for faster-than-light travel, essentially creating a cosmic shortcut. He proposed a warp bubble around a spaceship, warping space-time in a way that compressed it behind the ship and expanded it in front, providing propulsion without conventional rockets. It was like surfing on a wave of space-time curvature. What made Alcubierre's work groundbreaking was that it was a valid solution to the Einstein field equations, the mathematical foundation of general relativity. It opened the door to discussions about faster-than-light travel, intriguing both scientists and science fiction enthusiasts. However, a significant challenge is the need for exotic matter with negative energy density, a theoretical concept never observed in nature. The energy requirements are astronomical, and paradoxes related to time travel, like the grandfather paradox, are unsolved. Recent developments have kindled hope. Researchers at the Advanced Propulsion Laboratory at Applied Physics have proposed a new warp drive model based on the behavior of space-time bubbles, addressing some of these challenges. Scientists and theorists continue to explore whether such a propulsion system can ever become a reality. Chemical rockets, as effective as they are, may seem a bit primitive when you break down their basic operation. You load up tons of fuel, whether it's in liquid or solid form, add an oxidizer, set it all on fire, and rely on the explosive gases to provide the necessary push to propel your rocket in the opposite direction. The process is quite inefficient. Take the Falcon Heavy, for instance. It's a massive rocket that carries nearly 400 tons of fuel and oxidizer. The first stage burns for a mere 162 seconds, 
and the second stage lasts for 397 seconds, totaling about 9.5 minutes of burn time. This inefficiency has led scientists to explore alternative forms of propulsion, especially for long journeys in space. One of the most promising solutions on the horizon is the ion thruster. Ion drives are relatively slow but incredibly fuel efficient, making them a great option for various space missions. While the most efficient chemical rockets eject hot gases at about 5 kilometers per second, ion engines kick it up several notches by expelling individual atoms at a blistering 90 kilometers per second. This higher velocity results in significantly more efficient acceleration. While the best chemical rockets operate at around 35% efficiency, ion engines boast an impressive 90% efficiency. These engines can run for days, weeks, or even months, tirelessly accelerating long after chemical rockets would have run out of fuel. Once you're beyond a planet's gravity well, they become incredibly efficient tools for making dramatic changes in velocity. NASA and other space agencies have embraced ion engines with great success across various missions. They've tinkered with this thruster concept for decades, but initially hesitated to use it in active missions due to potential risks. That all changed with NASA's Deep Space One mission, launched in 1998. This spacecraft was a bundle of daring technologies, including low-power electronics, solar concentrator arrays, scientific instruments, and a solar electric propulsion system. The engine was run for extended periods, allowing it to make up-close observations of asteroids, comets, and even Mars. Building on these successes, NASA's Dawn mission took it up a notch, featuring three redundant ion engines. These engines enabled the spacecraft to orbit the asteroid Vesta, gather data, then break orbit and head to asteroid Ceres for even more exploration. Astonishingly, there might still be fuel left for additional asteroid visits. To give you a sense of their acceleration, Dawn can go from 0 to 43,000 kilometers per hour in just four days of continuous thrusting. Ion thrusters have also played roles in various other missions. ESA's Smart One spacecraft used them to travel from Earth orbit to lunar orbit, and the Japanese Hayabusa spacecraft relied on ion engines. These engines have even been put through rigorous testing on Earth, where they continuously operated for more than five years. As if these successes weren't exciting enough, the future holds even more promise for ion thrusters. Researchers are actively working on ways to boost their spacecraft's performance, one promising avenue involves increasing the electricity used to propel ions, as NASA once planned with the Jupiter IC Moons Orbiter, which utilized a nuclear electric xenon ion system engine for exploring Jupiter's moons. Unfortunately, this mission got canceled in 2005. Another approach is the development of high-thrust versions of ion engines, such as NASA's X-3 Hall Thruster, which can generate a substantial 5.4 newtons of force, a major improvement from previous thrusters that produced only thousandths of newtons. If fully harnessed, this technology could significantly reduce travel times for human astronauts heading to Mars to just a few months. Engineers are preparing for 100-hour tests of the X-3 to evaluate its long-term performance. The European Space Agency is also experimenting with an air-breathing ion engine. Unlike traditional engines that carry their propellant, this innovative engine draws in air molecules from the low Earth orbit atmosphere, ionizes them, and expels them. With access to abundant solar power and atmospheric propellant, it could operate for extended periods without refueling. This advancement has the potential to revolutionize space travel, allowing spacecraft to function at lower altitudes and space stations to stay in low Earth orbit indefinitely without the need for periodic boosts. While ion drives have made significant progress, warp drives remain more theoretical. Scientists are still grappling with how to create warp bubbles in space and lack an exit strategy once inside. Researchers are now shifting their focus from ion thrusters to nuclear thermal engines, with NASA and DARPA collaborating on the demonstration rocket for agile cislunar operations, DRACO, to advance this space-age engine. This is because in 2027 we're looking forward to having advanced nuclear thermal propulsion technology that will revolutionize space travel. These rockets work by harnessing the power of a fission reactor that generates incredibly high temperatures. This heat is then transferred to a special liquid propellant, which, 
when released through a nozzle, propels the spacecraft forward. The result is an incredibly efficient propulsion system that can be up to three times more efficient than traditional chemical methods. This development is a game changer for space exploration, especially for long distance missions like Mars. It means faster trips, which require fewer supplies and simplify mission systems. Additionally, these rockets offer enhanced capabilities for scientific payloads and provide more power to instruments and communication systems. But why the shift from ion thruster engines? Ion and plasma thrusters are great, but have their drawbacks, such as low thrust and high power demands. They can also risk contaminating spacecraft surfaces. Nuclear thermal engines, on the other hand, provide a significant thrust advantage and improved efficiency, making them ideal for certain missions. However, it's not all smooth sailing. The nuclear core of these engines becomes intensely radioactive when operational, requiring a safe distance for crew and robots. This adds complexity to spacecraft design. Despite these challenges, NASA and DARPA are collaborating to make space missions more efficient and usher in a new era of space exploration. It's all about choosing the right tool for the job and weighing the pros and cons to ensure mission success. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and watch the next video as well. See you again.